Why did they name planets after Greek or Roman gods? Because that was the prevailing worldview of the day. Well, at least for Venus and Mars, along with Jupiter and Saturn. But Neptune is very faint and wasn't discovered until well after Roman culture had dissolved. Yeah, it was a French guy who named it, uh, what was his name again? Urbain Le Verrier. Don't tell me you know the actual date. September 24th, 1876. I'll give the exact time if you would like. That's okay. Guys, I would like for you to know that we have just broken the record for the furthest manned mission, which was last set by your mom and dad about three years ago. Now entering sync orbit. Wow, that's gorgeous. I believe I like Neptune best of all. Look at that blue color. God created it with you in mind, Priscilla. I don't know. I don't really think I'm all that important that he would create a planet just for me. Well, he knew that you would be standing here and that it would be your favorite. Earth's my favorite, it's much warmer. You know, that's an amazing thought you just brought on Funko Enoch, that God knew before time began that I would be here looking at one of the most distant planets in the solar system. Not only did he know... Yeah, he willed it. I was meant to be here looking at this beautiful planet that he created. He knew I would be here, seeing it this close. It's an astonishing thought, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Why would he do something like that for me? Well, I really can't say. Those are the secret things of the Lord. But I do know this. Jesus also saw you while he was on the cross. He saw all of his elect, and he died just for them. Wait, you're telling me that Christ saw me specifically while he was being tortured on the cross? That he did it specifically for me? He saw you before you were ever born. He willed your birth, and before he created the first Adam, he knew that he would come and die for your sins. I don't think I can get my mind around it. Why would he do that? So you just touched a nerve? Not me, the Holy Spirit. I'll give her a minute and go talk to her. Come in. 
Do you want to talk about it? It's just that I'm so unworthy to be given such a special favor by God. We all are. How can we ever thank Him? Yield to Him, obey Him, follow Him, love Him with all of our hearts. I do. Right now I'm bursting open with love for Him. I want to know everything about Him. <laughs> me too. I study His Word every day, and I pray for Him to help me understand it. Thank you, Uncle Renick, for telling me that. I love you, and I'm glad you're my new dad. <laughs> me too. So what's going on with her? She's understanding the very important truth of just how powerful God's love is. I have trouble understanding that myself sometimes. Well, how much time have you spent in prayer seeking it? Mm, probably less than I should. God works with different people in different ways, but there are a few things we can bank on. Yeah, what's that? We can rest assured in the fact that there are several means of grace that God uses to draw us close and to make us like Christ. The Bible? That's one, along with prayer, preaching, and teaching. You know, I've been by her bunk room several times in the past few weeks, and I've noticed that just about every time she's in there praying. Yeah, she's always been sensitive, but I have noticed a change in her lately. She's more serious about the things of God. Shouldn't we all be that way? Okay, guys, let's see what God has out there for us to discover. I'm with you. Don Tom, let's launch reconnaissance probe. Setting telemetry commands. Great. Open the release hatch. Aye, aye, Captain. I always wanted to say that. Setting trajectory toward the equator of Neptune, straight to the core. If there is a core, Danton, release the probe. Fire probe. Propulsion system engaged. Probe is away. ETA until atmospheric contact is 15 seconds. Is all of the telemetry online? Yes, sir. We'll be measuring temperature and concentrations of various gases. If all the theories are correct, the probe should hit something reasonably solid around the mantle at a depth of 7,000 kilometers. Getting readings, we have methane and ammonia. Atmospheric pressure is rising. It's at two times Earth's pressure. Should be nearing the mantle. How about it, Priscilla? We are breaking through the troposphere now. If the theories are right, we should lose the probe when it strikes the core. The pressure is at 7 megabars. That would crush little G. Well, I'm glad I didn't send you down there. <laughs> the temperature is rising fast, 6,500 degrees Fahrenheit. How far from the core, Priscilla? Any second now. Still getting data. The probe is now ascending. It'll never make it out, but now we know there's no solid core. And the only way we could have known that is to fire that probe through it. You have to admit it, though. It is kind of exciting. It's not every day you get to fire something through a planet. Go ahead, Lieutenant Jennings. Good morning, Captain. I see you've already been hard at work this morning. Well, you can mark the probe test off the list. Excellent. The Admiral wants Danton to take the LG-7 to the surface of Triton. Really? The landing coordinates are being uploaded to you now. Great. He needs to get out of the house a bit. Looks like he has cabin fever to me. You may proceed immediately. Thank you, Lieutenant Jennings. Let's get over to Triton and establish a sink orbit. Aye, aye, Captain. Engaging in my ease. Is it just me, or is he getting more incorrigible by the day? If by incorrigible you mean goofy, then yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> That's cold. You know, Triton and Titan sound a lot alike. Wow, that was profound. Yes, they do, Danton. I was just noticing that I have problems with anything that sounds like Titan. Well, sounding like it and being like it are two different things, Lackey. Triton has very little atmosphere, so it'll be like landing on the moon. Yeah, I have bad memories of that place, too. Oh, well, that was then, this is now. I think spaceflight might be taking its toll on his brain. Oh, and Danton? Yep. I love you. Please be careful. I love you, too, and I will. Lieutenant Jennings? Yes? Could you come up to the data gallery for a minute? I have something you're going to want to see. I'm a little busy. Can it wait? Um, I think you're going to want to see this now. All right, I'll be there in a moment. 
I'm about a mile from the landing zone. Steer clear of those geysers. My sensors indicate that they are spewing up cryogenic nitrogen. Well, I can tell you this, it's nothing like the moon. Based on my readings, I didn't think so. The entire surface is a frozen wasteland. The ice is discolored with some very strange spots. Those spots are called maculae, which really does mean strange spots. See, I was right for once. Okay, Danton, you should be nearing the landing zone. Priscilla, do a deep scan of that area to make sure that the subsurface is stable. The maximum scan depth is 12 meters. The subsurface is very dense. I can't tell what's beyond that depth. Danton, we can only scan to 12 meters. Just take a shallow core sample and then get off the surface as quickly as possible. All right, Arnold, I'm here. What is it? So I was scrolling through some old security footage and found a missing time code. So looked on the mainframe and found this video. What about it? It's of your console. Who is that? Here, I'll blow it up. It's Corporal Williams? Yep. I found him that night at your console. He's your mole. The ground is very hard, the drill is barely penetrating. Can you increase the drill speed? Yes, but I think I'll need to turn on the injection steam pumps. That should help. Danton, I'm showing some surface instability near your area, about a half mile to the north. Yeah, one of those geysers just blew. The steam's helping, the drill's beginning to sink in. I think I'm getting a good core. You need to get that sample and get off the surface. I'm getting a bad feeling about this. That's not good. You're usually a pretty positive guy. Scanner is showing significant subsurface instability directly beneath LG7. Pull the core. That's enough. I know what I'm no longer welcome. Retracting drill. I got the core. Get LG7 off the surface. Now. Scanner is showing a huge fissure forming underneath Tauntaun. something, trying to regain control. Track him, Priscilla. I've got him. Uh, that's not good. I really hit something. LG7's not moving. That's because I'm lying sideways at the bottom of a snowbank. Do you have any thrusters to roll it back over? Nope, I must have knocked something loose. We'll just have to get him. Uh, I hate to put you out, but could you come and get me? We will, but there'll be a towing fee. Do you have AAA? Ha ha ha, you're not really that funny, do you know that? <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. Just hang tight and twiddle your thumbs, we'll be there shortly. Okay, Danton, we need to get a cable hooked up to you. How are you going to get it over here? The fun way. I'll walk it over. Priscilla, can you hold down the fort? Yes, sir. I'm heading across now. Just sit tight and I'll have you hooked up in no time. You know you're having fun. I have to admit, I am. It's been a while since my last spacewalk. Sounds like you're doing fine to me. I'm loving it. Okay, you're hooked up. I'm gonna put G7 into four-wheel drive and pull you out of here. Uh, Captain, you may want to get a move on. Sensors are showing more instability in our area. Now you know how I feel. It's always look out for this and watch out for that. It's like a never-ending game of cosmic dodgeball. I'm on board. Priscilla, save us a little time and warm up the MIEs. 
Yes, sir. Engaging in my ease. Hey, that's my line. Well, you're welcome to say it while I actually do it. Uh, I'm starting to feel some more shaking. How's it coming? I'll have you out in just a moment. The subsurface is getting very unstable. It could blow anywhere at any moment. Here we go. Danton, I'm going to take you out of Triton's gravitational field and then perform a docking maneuver. Sounds good. Anything to get away from these cryovolcanoes. Well, if you wouldn't drive like Mr. Magoo, we wouldn't need to rescue you. Who is Mr. Magoo? Never mind. Hello, Miss Jennings. Hello, Captain. I see you've been busy. Yeah, Danton had a run-in with a cryovolcano. And it won. It seems so. What is the damage report on LG-7? We don't know for sure yet, but it doesn't look major. Hopefully it's not, because in your next mission you will go through the alleged Kuiper Belt into the interstellar medium, where you will recover Voyager 2. What? They actually got permission to get it? That old antique? What will we do with it once we have it? It will be brought back and put into a museum, where everyone can learn that it is pointless to send probes for the sole purpose of trying to find life in other star systems. That's a good reason. Sounds good. Let me get Danton back on board and then we'll set a course for the Termination Shock Barrier and Voyager. Oh, and one other thing. We found the mole. I can't say any more than that, but we know who he is. So what are we going to do? Security is handling the details, but let's just say he'll be in for a bit of a surprise. Well, it's good to know that we only need to watch out for naturally occurring events and not a saboteur. That's for sure. Well, let us get our lieutenant back on board. It's a long way to the edge of the solar system. Sounds good. Have a great mission. Thank you, Miss Jennings. Okay, Danton, let's see about getting you docked. Come on back aboard, Lieutenant. I'm gonna miss this place. I know, I'm getting kinda homesick, but just being here is an honor. Yes, it is, but I'm missing home a little too. Yeah, I think we all are. Speak for yourself, I'm loving every minute of it. Yeah, crashing into everything does look fun. Not. I can't help it if the ground suddenly decides to explode underneath me, or if a big rock comes crashing down on me, or if I get caught in a huge red hurricane, or if my landing gear melts. Engage in my ease. You guys really don't care a bit. Nope, not at all. Engaging in my ease. Thank you.